Good evening, this is Chaplain Dell again, a storyteller. These are for people who are in sobriety, trying to get sober, or trying to find their own spirituality, whatever it may be. I love stories. I found this story, by the way, in my grandfather's papers, and I thought that it was a great story to impart unto you. It's called The Red Marbles. Unusual name for a story. I was at the corner grocery store buying some early potatoes. I noticed a small boy, delicate of bone and features, ragged but clean, hungrily apprising a basket of freshly picked green peas. I paid for my potatoes but was also drawn to the display of the fresh green peas. I'm a pushover for cream peas and new potatoes. Pondering the peas, I couldn't help overhearing a conversation between Mr. Miller, the store owner, and the ragged boy next to him. Hello, Barry. How are you doing? Doing fine, Mr. Miller. Thank you. Just admiring them peas. They sure look awful good. They are good, Barry. How's your ma? Well, she fine, getting stronger every day. Good. Anything I can help you with? No, sir. Just admiring those green peas. Would you like to take some home, Mr. Miller said? No, sir. Got nothing to pay for them. Well, what do you have to trade for some of those peas? And the boy said, all I got is my prize marble here. Is that right? Let me see it, said Mr. Miller. Here it is. She's a dandy, ain't she? Mm, I can see that. Hmm. Only thing is, this one is blue, and I sort of go for red. Do you have a red one like this at home? The store owner asked. Not exactly, but almost, the boy said. Tell you what, take this sack of peas home with you, and the next trip this way, look me, and let me look at that red marble you have. Sure will. Thanks, Mr. Miller. Mrs. Miller, who has been standing nearby, came over to help me. With a smile, she said, there are two other boys like him in the community. All three are in very poor circumstances. Jim just loves to bargain with them for peas, apples, tomatoes, or whatever. When they come back with their red marble, and they always do. He decides that he doesn't like red after all, and he sends them home with a bag of produce for a green marble or an orange one when they come on their own next trip to the store. I left the store smiling to myself, impressed with this man. A short time later, I moved to Colorado, and I was never forgetting the story of this man, the boys in there bartering for all kinds of marbles. Several years went by, each more rapid than the previous one. Just recently, I had the occasion to visit some old friends in that Idaho community, and I was learning that Mr. Miller had passed away. They were having a visitation that evening, and knowing my friends wanted to go, I agreed to accompany them. Upon arrival at the funeral parlor, we fell into line to meet the relatives of the deceased and offer whatever words of comfort we could. Ahead of us in line were three young men. One was in an army uniform and the other two wore nice haircuts, dark suits, white shirts, all very professional looking. They approached Mrs. Miller, standing composed and smiling by her husband's casket. 
Each of the young men hugged her, kissed her on the cheek, briefly spoke to her and moved on to the casket. Her misty light blue eyes followed them there, one by one. Each young man stopped briefly and placed his own warm hand over the cold pale hand in the casket. Each left the mortuary awkwardly wiping his eyes. Our turn came to meet Mrs. Miller. I told her who I was and reminded her of the story of those many years ago, and she told me about her husband bartering for marbles. With her eyes glistening, she took my hand and led me to the casket. Those three young men who just left were the boys I told you about, she said. They just told me how they appreciated the things that Jim traded them. Now at last, when Jim could not change his mind about color or size, they came to pay their debt. We've never had a great deal of wealth in this world, she confided, but right now Jim is probably the richest man in Idaho. With loving gentleness, she lifted the lifeless fingers of her deceased husband, resting underneath with three exquisitely shiny red marbles. The moral of the story, we may not be remembered by our words, but our kind deeds. Life is not measured by the breath we take, but by the memories that take our breath away. Today I wish you a day of ordinary miracles, a fresh pot of coffee you didn't make yourself, an unexpected phone call from a friend, an old friend, green stoplights all the way home from work, the fastest line in the grocery store, a good sing-along song on the radio and the keys that you lost, you found exactly where you left them. It's not what you gather in life, but you, what you scatter that tells what kind of life you have lived. That's a story from my grandfather. And it applies back in the 20s and 30s as it does today. Be a friend to somebody. Help somebody, be kind, give them your smile, say hello, tell them you love them. Well, that's it for this evening's Fireside Chat. And this is Chaplain Dell, signing off.